Well, good afternoon, Travis family. I'm excited to be with you this afternoon and share just for a few minutes on our summer series of the Wisdom Books. And I've selected uh, some verses from uh, the Book of Psalms to share with you today. You know, the Wisdom Books typically, they say is Job, Psalms, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes. Uh, Psalms, uh, the Songs, the Hymn Book of Israel. Uh, I've selected Psalms 19, which uh, uh, was written by King David. Uh, I say King, we also know him as shepherd, a musician, a warrior, and a king. And uh, as I was preparing for this, I, I ran across a quote by C.S. Lewis that I'd like to share with you because he wrote that he takes Psalms 19 to be the greatest poem in the Psalter, one of the greatest lyrics in all the world. You know, we often uh, sing this psalm. Uh, I think I learned this, uh, this song as a young, young boy and it sticks with me every time I read the psalm, I wanna sing it. However, I've been told by all the elders to not even think about it, to give it to you straight. So that's what I'm gonna do. Well, we're gonna be in Psalms 19 and as I start, I've selected uh, verse seven as the beginning place where the scripture says, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple. And what King David is, is sharing with us here is he's come to find that the Word of God, he calls it the law of the Lord, is more than intellectual thoughts. It's more than words and letters. It revives, it, it uh, changes, it, it, it affects our character in our lives. And he says this testimony of the Lord, another word for the, uh, another synonym for the Word of God, uh, it's sure, it even makes wise the simple. Uh, because it's sure and because it's certain. So, you know, we could even say for this that the Word of God applies to every man and woman, boy and girl, uh, even those that might not have a, a, a great deal of education uh, and upbringing scholastically, the scripture still can promote life and godliness to them because they trust and they meditate on the Word of the Lord. Verse eight, it says the precepts of the Lord are right rejoicing the heart and the commandment of the Lord. It's pure, enlightening the eyes. Now, I like that where he says that it's right. The Word of God, the precepts of the Lord are right. Uh, literally, it means to make straight, to make smooth, uh, opposed to crookedness, if you will, in mind or in conduct. It, it, it shows us what we should be. The Word of God is a, a light to show us what we should be, both within and without. He says that the commandment of the Lord is pure. Speaking to the fact that, that our God himself is pure, we have a God who is pure and holy in all his ways. Uh, and a pure God can only communicate purely. The word of God is pure. When we read it, it is an unadulterated word from God, the words of God. We never have to, to worry about the word of God leading someone into sin or impurity. Number nine in this Psalm says, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Now this is interesting in this verse that uh, I'd like to point out to you in verse nine, uh, David uh, uses the fear of the Lord as a synonym for the word of God. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Uh, the fear of the Lord in this sense that we all understand as we study and meditate upon God's Word, one of the wisdom books, we come to find out a sense of the awe uh, and the holiness of, of God, the author of the scriptures. We understand and, and experience the fact that it's a living book, that it's quick and alive, and we appreciate God more for it. Uh, the fear of the Lord, as David would say. The rules of the Lord, he says, are true and they're righteous altogether. Uh, for David, David is, is describing the Word of God in this sense as, as being completely true and righteous in all its manners. Uh, you know, I think, I think David understood from his personal experience and he's communicating to us uh, in this age that, that the Word of God, when we apply ourselves to it, that we find wisdom in the purity and the truth of the Scripture. And then in verse 10, David 
shares more to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. More to be desired are they, he says. What is they? Uh, David in verse seven, eight, and nine uses six synonyms for the word of God. The law of the Lord, the testimony of the Lord, the precepts of the Lord, the commandment of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, and the rules of the Lord. In verse 10, he summarizes telling us that, that uh, more to be desired are they, these six synonyms for the Word of God, than gold. Even than much fine gold, you could pile the gold up and he says it still will not equal the value of the Word of God. You know, King David was a massively wealthy man by today's standards, by any standard. And yet he's not known primarily for his riches. The legacy that David has, he's much more known for the heart that he had toward God. He is described in the scriptures as a man after the heart of God. Uh, and you can see that in verse 10 when he reflects upon the wealth that he might possibly hold, but yet the word of God in all its facets is worth more. He says that it's sweeter also than honey drippings out of the honeycomb, the most, I suppose, the sweetest thing that could be obtained in the time of David. Uh, yet it's a, sensual, uh, it's a sensual characteristic that he's referring to in our, in our own lives, that the Word of God takes a greater place than even sensual experiences that we might have in this life. You know, honey's sweet. It's sweet to eat and to savor in our mouth. It's a sensual pleasure. But David's communicating here that God's word is sweeter still. Friends, thank you for these uh, moments we've had together. And I wish you all of God's blessings and look forward to seeing you this weekend.